Hey guys, in today's video, I'll be taking you step by step on how to properly perform goblet squats. We'll also go over common mistakes to avoid and how to fix them. Timestamps will be in the description. If you're ready to level up your goblet squat, give this video a thumbs up and let's get started. Goblet squats are a great staple exercise to incorporate into your workouts, whether you're brand new to working out or have been lifting for years. This exercise will work your whole entire body, but with the focus on your lower body, more specifically the quads and glutes. I'll be using a dumbbell throughout this video, but these guidelines and cues will remain true for whatever kind of weights you're using, whether it's a kettlebell, cable machine, small child, or gallon of water. Let's go over form first without any weights so you can better see what I'm doing. Keep in mind that these are just basic tips and that you will need to adjust your goblet squat depending on your body. Everything from your ankle and hip mobility and length of your femurs and torso can definitely influence how your goblet squat looks and the perfect form that you should be using to get the most out of this exercise and keep your body safe. On top of this, you'll also find that people have their own personal preferences, so once you get this exercise down and are more comfortable with it, simply do what feels best for you. Starting, draw two lines straight down to the ground from your shoulders and position your feet to right outside of them. While some people may find that it's more comfortable for them when their toes are pointed straight ahead, others prefer when their toes are pointed slightly out to the sides like I am here. Try both and see which feels better to you. Regardless, the big thing you want to focus on here is to make sure your knees are pointing in the same direction as your toes as you go down into the squat, as this will ensure the safest and most stable position for your feet for you to perform this exercise. If you find your knees pointing towards each other into the center of your body as you go down into the squat, this is often a good indicator that your feet are likely a little too far apart. Simply bring them in closer together and see how that feels and looks. While the weight is traditionally held right at chest level and not on the chest, I do find that it can be easier for those who are just starting to try this exercise to place a weight right on your chest so that it's stable and in a secure position the entire time. Sometimes having the weight in midair can shift the focus from doing the exercise to trying Trying to keep the weight in the right spot and can also place more strain on the arms, again taking focus away from the exercise. As always, try both ways and do what works best for you and what you prefer. Before each rep, you're going to want to inhale and contract your core. Contracting your core is a term used often for exercises that can be confusing. I like to think of contracting your core as pushing your stomach out and filling it with air from the inside as if you had a food baby, while at the same time flexing your abs. What this does is creates a more stable and stronger center of your body so that your body can endure more weight as you lift heavier. It also helps to keep your spine in a neutral position throughout the exercise to prevent injury. Your back in general, and more specifically, lower back should never hurt while doing this exercise. If it ever does, decrease the amount of weight you're using or completely omit the weight altogether and simply focus Focus on adjusting and improving your form until you no longer feel the exercise in your back. Speaking of a neutral spine, you'll see that everything from my head to essentially my tailbone stays in line together throughout the movement, which is what you want when performing this exercise in really most, if not all, exercises. As I mentioned previously, keeping your spine in a neutral position throughout the exercise helps to minimize back pain and prevent injury. Once you've hit the lowest point of your squat, you'll want to squeeze your glutes as if you were doing a hip thrust or a glute bridge, and this will automatically push your hips forward and return you back to starting position. This is what we call the lockout. Squeeze your glutes only as much as they'll comfortably go, no need to lean backwards to push your hips forward even more. As you perform this portion of the exercise, exhale. I would like to note that there is no need to squat super deep right away. Only squat as low as you can without excessively rounding your lower back. As you get more comfortable with this movement and build better hip and ankle mobility, you'll be able to squat deeper. For now, simply focus on keeping that spine neutral. Lastly, make sure to keep your feet flat on the ground at all times to better provide a stable foundation for you to perform the exercise with. Let's go over all of that once more because I know it was quite a bit. First, position your feet right outside your shoulders. Toes pointing straight ahead or slightly out is up to you as long as your knees point in the same direction as your toes as you go down into the squat. Place the weights right on or right outside your chest. Inhale and contract your core. Lower yourself down into the squat as you can comfortably go without rounding your lower back. Once you've hit the lowest point of the squat, squeeze your glutes to push your hips forward into lockout and back to starting your position, exhaling as you do so. Your back should remain neutral with feet flat on the ground at all times. Before we head into mistakes to avoid when performing goblet squats, I wanted to give a quick shout out to one of the great sponsors of this channel, Sierra Nutrition. Sierra is a supplement company who focuses on creating products to fuel your body and keep your balance 
balanced inside and outside of the gym. The word Sierra actually means sun and it's such a fitting name because the brand is really such an uplifting, empowering, and inclusive community. If you've been here for a while, you're probably already familiar with Sierra, but if not, Sierra has a ton of different supplements from greens to pre-workout, protein powder, collagen, and more. I know not everyone cares about taste when it comes to supplements, but I definitely do, and Sierra's flavors always hit no matter the product. A few of my favorites and everyday staples from Sierra are their bright whey protein and reds and greens. These are three that I feel like everyone can use and benefit from even if you don't consider yourself a big gym goer. Make sure to check Sierra out and use my discount code Naomi10 if you ever want to pick up some supplements. My support link to shop is in the description as well. Now that we know how to properly perform goblet squats and you guys are pros now, these mistakes may seem quite obvious but let's go over them just in case anyways. First, avoid a levitating dumbbell. I know it can be easy for the dumbbell to stray a bit and move farther away from your chest but we're saving the arm workout for another day and when we're performing goblet squats we want to make sure that the focus is on the lower body. So make sure that whatever weight you're using remains right on or right in front of your chest. Here we want to avoid our heels coming off the ground and feet not staying stable. As we've learned, feet should stay flat on the ground at all times to provide a more stable foundation for the exercise. I find that this is just something people do unconsciously and by simply being aware of it, the issue can easily be fixed. Wearing flat-soled shoes like Converse Vans, Nobles, Nike Metcons, etc. can help with this, but regardless of the shoe, the technique should essentially remain the same. Keeping our spine neutral is super important in making sure we don't place unnecessary stress on our backs and potentially injure ourselves. So we want to avoid rounding the lower back excessively as well as hyperextending the lower back. You'll see me rounding my back as I hit the lowest point of the squat, which can often happen when you're squatting deeper than what your body will really allow, as well as when your core doesn't stay tight and contracted through throughout the movement. Right before every rep here, you'll see that my lower back is hyperextended as my lower back is flexed and booty is popped out excessively. Again, this can typically be fixed by making sure that the core is tight and contracted, which will naturally bring your spine into a neutral position. Knees caving in is another thing you'll want to avoid. If you find that they are, try moving your feet closer together and see if that helps. Knees should point in the same direction as your toes. As you get more comfortable with this exercise, you'll of course want to lift heavier. If you're familiar with my channel, you know that I always say when performing a new exercise, start with the lightest weight possible, in this case, no additional weights and just body weight only, and then when you can comfortably perform 12 to 15 reps with good form, then increase the weight. And when I say increase the weight, I would recommend small increments, anywhere from a simple two and a half to five pounds only before increasing the weight again. I also wanted to say that no one is a master at every single exercise and even for me being a NASM certified personal trainer, in years into my fitness journey, I still go in every single week refining and working on my exercise form. Don't get too frustrated or disheartened if you're not able to perfect your exercises right away. It takes a lot of time and practice and no one masters an exercise automatically. Take your time and be patient with yourself as you learn and progress. You're doing amazing. If you enjoyed this video, do your girl a solid and give this video a thumbs up and share it with anyone else who might also find it helpful. For more videos like this on other exercises at the gym, check out my exercise form playlist linked in the description that I have here on my channel. If you're not already, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so that we can keep learning and progressing along our fitness journeys together. Thanks so much for stopping by today, guys. I appreciate your time and energy. Have a wonderful weekend and I'll see you soon.